Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team WK, CC Trainer Ling, here to bring you another retro review from past seasons of The Loud House. In today's video, we'll look at the Season 3 episode where, if things had gone the way Chris Savino intended, we'd have had a much different series, and let's just say I'm glad we didn't go in this direction. Today's episode is titled, White Hair. First, we'll discuss the plot, and then my thoughts and critiques with my final score. So, let's get right into it. The episode begins with a Fonzie-dressed Lincoln preparing to introduce himself to the new girl at school when the bus arrives. His sisters catch him before he can leave the house, and they find out what he's planning to do. Thinking they're going to mess things up like they did in the episode Heavy Metal, he runs off to the forest to wait for the bus. He sees a boy rabbit with his 25 sister rabbits, and wonders how difficult it would be to put up with that many girls. He then knocks himself unconscious and imagines himself leaving his house again, but as a white rabbit rabbit named Warren, who also has 25 sisters. His sisters find out about his plan to meet with the new girl, and they begin interfering as Warren tries to break free. Eventually, he gets caught, and his sisters take away his Fonzie persona and send him on his way in a manner they think would be better. Warren meets the new girl and tries to put his sister's advice to good use, but everything goes wrong, and she leaves with another rabbit who resembles what Warren was planning to look like. He falls over and knocks himself out, again, and reawakens as himself. When he sees the boy rabbit make a good impression with a female rabbit thanks to his sister's involvement, Lincoln thinks his own sisters might know what they're doing after all. He races home to ask for their advice, but they say they were never going to change him. They wanted to know why Lincoln felt he needed to change who he was. After complimenting him on how he's perfect just the way he is, Lincoln returns to his usual clothes and catches the bus to meet with the new girl, and they hit it off just fine. Well, that concludes the plot of the episode, so now we come to my thoughts and critiques. I'll admit, I was a tad skeptical of this episode when I first read the synopsis. But then I remembered something about rabbits when I learned about the Loud House coming to Nickelodeon a few years back. When I found out this was the original idea for the series, I was really eager to see how it would play out, and it played out exactly how I thought it would. I really liked the designs for the rabbit characters, although I'm not sure what the deal is for the only boy in the house House, Warren being the only sibling whose name doesn't begin with the letter B, I still enjoyed the interactions between him and his other sisters. It accurately summed up the central layout of the Loud House, which would be one boy trying to put up with all sisters. Even so, I see this interaction as both a blessing and a curse. It's good to see what Chris Savino's initial plan for this series would have been, effectively making this episode the original yet unofficial pilot of the Loud House, but at the same time, you have have to admit this would have been a disaster of a series had it gone through the way it was presented here. One boy and 10 girls versus one boy and 25 girls. Which one doesn't sound like a bigger headache? The major disadvantage this series would have had would be dealing with something you refer to as character overload. Based on the number of sisters Warren has, it would have been nearly impossible to develop each of the girls on an individual level. A lot of the girls are just separate personality traits from each of Lincoln's 10 human sisters. For instance, the clown rabbit is based off Luann, and the black rabbit is based off Lucy. You can easily identify which rabbit matches with each human, both in behavior and voice. And even though we don't know which one of the louds is all about inner peace or who is most likely to think they'll grow old and alone, you can see how that's one personality too many. I can see why the series got changed from 25 rabbits to 10 human girls, and combining multiple rabbit personas into each human would make character development incredibly easier. You think you can develop a character who likes to sleep all the time? Have fun with that! Speaking of characters, am I the only one who thinks Clyde's rabbit-verse version of himself, a beaver named Danny, seems a little out of place? Eh, maybe that's just me. It's not bad, though. He still retains his crush on Warren's eldest sister, so at least there's consistency in that. We're also introduced rather indirectly, to Stella, the new girl at school. This is the only time we see her with a completely different hairstyle than what we first see in her debut episode of Be Stella My Heart. Of course, she does make a reference to carrots in that episode, as she does here, so that's something to remember. The best part of the episode was just before Lincoln had to race after the bus. He got his sisters all wrong when he thought they were trying to change him. At first glance, 
They did get a little giddy when they found out he was going to be talking to the new girl. It's a sister thing, you know? And I can see why Lincoln wanted to get away from them. In his defense, they've been known to get far too involved with his life like we see in Heavy Metal and One of the Boys. In the case of the former episode, their meddling may have led him to a black eye, but he admitted their advice had its benefits since Ronnie Ann started befriending him after he kissed her. I think in this episode, the girls had already come to terms with how they no longer needed to interfere with Lincoln when it came to befriending girls, noting how sorry they were for what happened when they suggested he should kiss Ronnie Ann, and more importantly how he doesn't need to put on an act just to get a girl to like him. He has always been himself around girls like Ronnie Ann, so why would he feel he needed to be someone he's not if girls already like him just the way he is? His sisters knew that and Lincoln needed to hear those kind words from his family. Their compliments were as genuine and as sweet as they could be, and let's be honest, our hearts melted the moment Lily started talking. It was so cute. Overall, if I could sum up this episode in just one word, it would be exceptional. Now, it's not my favorite of season three, but it's one that really stands out in my mind for a variety of reasons. The interesting look into how the series was almost rabbit-fied may be a huge hit or miss depending on how you choose to approach it, but the conflict presented in Lincoln's dream captured the essence of what the Loud House has always been about, and the opening and ending scenes with his sisters also helped to reinforce the same idea. Idea, particularly about family. It was a good moment of growth for all 11 kids, and for what it's worth, it's a reminder of how when it comes to creating characters, less is always more. With that said, I give White Hair a 9.1 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of White Hair. Like I said, I don't think this series would have lasted more than one season if we had to deal with 26 characters in the main cast. And seeing how this exclusive look into what this series could have been, I don't think it would have lasted beyond a simple three minutes short either. But we'll never know for sure. So what did you guys think of it? Love it? Hate it? Something you would add? Change? Keep it as it is? Let me know in the comments below. And make sure to subscribe to this channel for the latest Loud House content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video. But until then, this is Steam Team Rita WK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.